What's better, this or this? And how do you improve a glorified pool float? I mean, it's just tubes filled with air, right? Well, those are the things we're talking about today because brands have been busy upgrading, improving, and even inventing new gear for the 2023 hiking season. And looking at the gear that's just now coming out, it's going to be a good year. Well, mostly. Probably one of the most anticipated new tents of 2023 is the XMID Pro 1. Look, a lot of tents are the same. You've got trekking pole tents and then you got freestanding tents. And for the most part, there's only very small differences. But Durston Gear is one of the only tent manufacturers that seems to be doing something different. Even though they really only have four tents and they're all basically the same. Still, the XMID has one of the simplest designs that offers increased interior space, easy pitching, good wind and rain performance, along with a host of other improvements. The new XMED Pro 1 is a single wall redesign of the original XMED 1, but it's made out of Dyneema, making it incredibly lightweight. The Pro 1 comes in just over a pound, not counting trekking poles or stakes, and is the most innovative single person tent to come along in a really long time. The only problem is Dyneema isn't cheap, and this tent comes in at $600. So if you wanna take advantage of the new features, you're going to have to pay for it. It's not very often that I get excited about a new pack from Osprey, but the new Exos Pro 55 has perked my interest. This is one of the only ultralight offerings from a traditional brand like Osprey, with the new Pro 55 claiming 2.1 pounds. I actually forgot to check it for myself before I loaded up for a trip that I'm headed out for tomorrow. Well, technically yesterday by the time you see this. But what I find really interesting is that they are designating this the Pro. Like Osprey knows that when you start taking backpacking seriously, you're naturally going to want to shed some weight from your pack. And what you get is a more traditional pack with an adjustable torso, good suspension, and superb back ventilation. It actually reminds me a lot of the Z-Pack's Arc Hall with a very similar frame design to allow for that back ventilation. It also has a removable hood and this little flap so that if you want to save even more weight, you can still have a functional pack. Okay, with the tent that I've got next, I'm breaking one of my cardinal rules. This is the Nemo Hornet three-person tent, and I know that most people treat three-person tents like they're two-person tents and two-person tents like they're one, but I don't think we should allow companies to get away with that. Call it what it is. That being said, this Hornet three-person is nice. The Hornet Elite was my go-to tent for years, and this is basically the same tent, but with a 60-inch wide floor. And I'll admit, that is really nice. And and for such a large tent, the Hornet 3 person comes in at just over three pounds. That's the same weight as the Big Agnes Copper Spur and the MSR Hubba Hubba. This is a three person tent that weighs basically the same as both of those two person tents and it has more room. Okay, so I just found out you actually can't run through campsites. Do you guys know this? I just figured this out. You can only ran because it's past tents. <laughs> That's one of four dad jokes I'm gonna tell in the next 30 seconds because today's sponsor, the more I get to know them, the more they remind me of a dad telling dad jokes. Okay, what do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. You see, Moose Jaw is the most fun outdoor retailer that there is. Spend a little bit of time on their website or their social media channels and you will get the dad joke vibe. Did you hear about the kidnapping in the woods? It's okay, he woke up. Not only is Moose Jaw the most fun, but they give you 10% back on purchases. And if you use the code MLOMJ, that stands for My Life Outdoors and Moose Jaw, you'll get another 10% just for watching this channel. So I asked the llama if they wanted to go camping. Very excited, he said, alpaca tent. <laughs> Remember, that's MLOMJ for 10% off most things Moose Jaw sells, 5% off things that are already on sale. Some exclusions do apply. Nikkor has long been the king of ultralight headlamps. Their NU25 headlamp weighs just over an ounce from the factory, but many diehard ultralights couldn't stand carrying such a heavy piece of gear, and they modified theirs with elastic strings instead of the standard elastic band to save that many more grams. Now, I'm all about saving weight, but this seems a bit excessive to me. But what I think is cool is that Nikkor saw that people were doing this and they decided to start doing it themselves. The kicker is the new NU25 Ultralight with the elastic strings actually weighs more than the old NU25 with the band. Now, it's just 0.1 ounce heavier, but 
it is heavier. Now for that extra 0.1 ounce, you get a couple of upgrades like a small lumen boost, a USB-C charging port, but it seems like the main upgrade is the elastic string. So if you have the original, I wouldn't really bother with the new one. Big Agnes recently came out with the new ultralight zoom pad and I was really excited about this because one of the most comfortable pads that I've ever used was the Big Agnes Q-Core. The zoom has a very similar design but boasts higher R value up to 4.2 and a lighter weight, about 15 ounces. But when I actually took it out in the field, I could feel cold coming up through the mattress. Now, I'm a little dumbfounded by this because this pad is ASTM certified with an R value of 4.2. Normally I trust ASTM ratings without question, but I've been sleeping on other pads rated at 4.2 for a really long time and I've never felt cold coming up like this, which led me to try to do some of my own testing. I bought this little thermal camera and as you can see, the zoom pad seems to have some spots where it doesn't really insulate as much, but I compared it to my Nemo insulated tensor that has the same R value and I've trusted without hesitation for the last year. Now I'm not sure how accurate my testing was, but I couldn't see a big difference between the tensor and the zoom and I've never really had a problem with my tensor even down to some very cold temperatures. So despite my attempt at finding a smoking gun here, the new zoom, I'm going to have to say the verdict is still out. Now for the worst piece of new gear for 2023, the newly redesigned Thermarest X-Lite NXT. But first, a disclaimer, this is not a bad pad, and Thermarest has made some really nice updates to the most popular backpacking pad ever sold. It's half an inch thicker, up to three inches from 2.5, and they bumped the R value to 4.5 up from 4.2, so you've got a little bit more warmth. But the main thing that they have been pushing is how much quieter the NXT pad is. The final design of the X-Lite NXT eliminated 83.4% of the noise, making it six times quieter than the previous X-Lite. This is a big deal because the main complaint that X-Lite has had over the years is that it sounds like you're sleeping on a bag of potato chips. And the new NXT pad certainly seems quieter, but in an effort to actually test this, I picked up a decibel meter and I did some testing on my own. Now, I didn't have an anechoic chamber, but I did have the outdoors where you're actually gonna be using this pad. And I held a decibel meter just a few inches from the pad and I only saw maybe a four to five decibel difference between the two pads. So I took the pad inside thinking that maybe the ground was rubbing against the pad somehow, but inside on carpet, I only saw a one to two decibel difference. Now, this may not be as accurate as the test that Thermarest performed themselves, but you would think that if there was really an 83% difference, I would see a little bit more than what I am. But this pad does seem quieter, and what I think is actually happening here is I think the NXT's crinkling has a lower pitch, making it sound quieter when there actually isn't any volume difference but it's still a really great pad with some really great improvements. And if you're using the X-Lite before and the sound wasn't bothering you, this is only going to be better. And that's the reality. All the new gear this year is really actually pretty good. And so saying that this is the worst or that is the worst is just the worst of the new gear that's just now coming out. If you wanna see the best and worst gear that came out last year, check out this video right here. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching. So I asked an alpaca if they wanted to go camping. Excited, he said, I'll, no. <laughs> no, it's the other way around. So I asked a llama if they wanted to go camping and excited, he said, alpaca can't. <laughs>